Let's talk about some lawsuits for the WWF. Dave Meltzer would report that, uh, McMahon was suing nails. According to the complaint filed in the Brown County circuit court of Wisconsin, McMahon claimed that nails, uh, perpetrated a violent attack and assault upon him with great force and violence. As a consequence of the attack, the suit claimed that McMahon suffered pain and bodily injury, as well as embarrassment and humiliation. McMahon also claimed the defendant filed a false police report claiming he had been sexually assaulted and the police report compounded the anguish and humiliation because the police report was published in various media outlets. Uh, before we move on to the other lawsuits, this whole nails situation has been one that's been, uh, whispered about for years and years. I know you weren't there when it happened. Uh, but what did you hear about this story? Well, you know, nails is a little different cat kind of unstable from what I remember. Uh, and he wasn't getting his break. He wasn't getting his push. There it is that push word again. Uh, and he, he felt like that, uh, Vince was personally, uh, subduing his growth. Let I me mean, to ask you how smart that really is to think about. Why would you have someone on your payroll and you're paying them and you're traveling them? You're putting them on television. If you want their character to die, that's like uh, when WWE was going to do the last few things with Matt Hardy. Well, you know, everybody's well, they're burying Matt Hardy. That was their intent was to bury Matt Hardy. Right. But from their own mismanagement and lack of attention to detail and lack of common sense, they got Matt Hardy over more on his way out than they did while he was there. He was uh, doing promos. He was in hot angles. He's with Randy Orton, blah, blah, blah. So you're not burying him. You're getting him over dumbass. And so now Matt Hardy's in AEW, which is going to be great for us, I think. But, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know, Connie, I think that, uh, nails just had this, this vision of him being this major star and being the top heel in the company. And when that didn't come his way, he felt like he had been personally assaulted or attacked. And then he being a very competitive and combative individual, maybe not as stable as some people would like for him to be. I don't, I didn't know the guy that well, right? I was like, you said, I wasn't there, but I know that, uh, the altercation he had with Vince. And then of course, he's got to come up with an excuse that me man put a you know, uh, hit on him or something. Well, that's stupid. That's just ridiculous. It's just, uh, another deal where, uh, an issue between two people, the Vince and the WWE and, and, uh, and nails, there was the, the communication broke down. They stopped talking. They started, you know, ranting. Uh, it was just bullshit is the way I understand, remember it. But, uh, talents have a funny way of not wanting to accept responsibility for their own success or failure. Let's talk about the next lawsuit. This one's from the ultimate warrior. He's going to file a $5.8 million lawsuit against Titan sports, Vince and Linda. The 19 page lawsuit is filed two weeks ago. Uh, in the Eastern district of New York, talk to me a little bit about, you know, what you heard coming into the company about dealing with the ultimate warrior. I think back in the day you dealt with him when he was first breaking in the business, but, uh, now he's gone on to be a big star and apparently mm-hmm. has developed a bit of a, a reputation along the way. Yeah. Apparently a bit of a reputation. Uh, I think, uh, I think it was a giant pain in the ass from day one. And again, I, and again, well, JR speaking bad of the dead. Oh, okay. Hey, look, I'm, I'm speaking. Conrad asked me a question. We're talking about a journey here and, and the warrior plays a part in that journey to some degree. Uh, he, he had a massive ego knowing that he was not highly skilled, knowing that his number one selling point was his physique and his charisma that largely was created through music and lights and pyro and things of that nature. He just, and he wasn't a good person in my view. That's my opinion. I thought that he uh, used extremely coarse and abusive language in front of women of all ages. I thought that was ridiculous. I've seen it in my own eyes. I'm not bullshitting or telling somebody's story that, you know, I heard, you know, this is not rumor in any window. This ain't Bruce. I'm telling you what I saw. And I didn't think the guy was uh, a good person. So, uh, but he, he always seemed to be at the center of controversy, which is not always good. And he was always centered to be uh, seemingly looking for that easy payday. And, uh, so I didn't have a lot of respect for the ultimate warrior, to be honest with you. I'm sad that he, uh, he passed. I'm glad that he got his moment in the sun before he died. I really am. 
for his fans sake and his family. I'm sad that he left two beautiful daughters and a very lovely wife, uh, w- w- upon his death. But we be, have to be, you know, be honest. People may say the same shit about me and you, Conrad, and we're gone. You know, uh, he wasn't a good guy. And so I didn't have any, any time there was a lawsuit with him involved. I always was cheering for the, for the other guys. Cause I just thought he was looking for a payday and as simple as that and had little to no respect for our business. And I ain't got a lot of time for guys like that. Let's talk about the last lawsuit in, uh, in WWE land. Vince and Titan sports are suing the New York post and Phil Mushnick for as long as I can remember, Phil Mushnick was a, a thorn in Vince McMahon's side. What do you remember about this sort of weird relationship? It was strange. Wasn't it? You know, Mushnick had this hard on, uh, figuratively, I'm assuming, uh, for events and wrestling in general, he was a very, very anti pro wrestling fan. And I think part of it stems to the fact that my belief now is that as a young guy, Mushnick was probably a significant wrestling fan, but the product changed so much from the days of Bruno and Backlund and that, and the typical and the, uh, predictable, uh, WWE presentation, uh, using that, the baby face is your, is your, is your champion. Uh, you build everything around your heel, your baby face champion. You have a heel factory. The heels present challenges with the baby face in jeopardy. All of a sudden the baby face then eventually prevails at the end of the day. And the, oops, here comes another challenger all for that coveted championship. So they did things differently in those days. Uh, and I think Mushing may liked it. I really believe that. But then when he saw the other things that were going on, the attitude era, the, the different characterizations, the personalities, uh, he, he, he turned rogue in that regard. And he had, he was a columnist for the post, very well read, very popular and uh, popular in the sense that he was a heel to a lot of people, but he played it up. And then he knew that wrestling fans were, were all a little bit crazy about uh, protecting our business and, and supporting it because we always feel like they're the skinniest kid at fat camp when we're a wrestling fan. So all of a sudden, you know, he's got a whole audience that's breathing down his neck and he loved it. So uh, he fed his own ego and his own persona, but that was all that was. I, I, it was just a, you know, Vince didn't like the guy who nobody liked him. He was trying to hatchet our business. And I think I remember one time he was on a radio show, Mike and the mad dog on WFAN where my friend, Steve Summers says me here, you there, uh, overnights. I used to listen to him a lot. Uh, they, uh, he, they got McMahon and Muchnick on the radio together. And that was one of the most, if you can, if people can find that someplace, if it's, it's, if it's been archived somewhere, it's worth the listen. Uh, cause I think, I don't know who got hijacked. I think Vince wasn't sure that Muchnick was going to be on or vice versa. Mike and the mad dog were good shit disturbers. They were getting high ratings right then. Mike Francesa not on the air anymore, at least in the WFAN. And of course, Chris Russo is a big star. Or where my buddies start busted open on Sirius XM. So that was where that was. It got to be personal. And I think, uh, when you heard much, thank you. If you can find the audio, Conrad, his voice is trembling like a child. He was so intimidated. So he, he seemed to be scared to death to actually be on the phone line with McMahon. It was really a uh, entertaining audio. No doubt. 